Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm Apinav, currently studying my master's in international relations in European politics, and joining me today is the very special. I'm Amir. I'm studying my bachelor's in international relations and European politics. So nice to see you guys here. All right. So with this presentation, we aim to discuss the academic objectives of international relations and European politics, what you will be studying, how studying is like here, uh, because I think Michaela, um, Kate, and Sophie, uh, Sophia already did a tremendous job explaining everything else from the structure, admission process, and everything else. So we'll be more core specific here. So why should you study international relations and European politics? Um, I cannot stress enough how good the subject is, first of all. Uh, you would study it to get skills and essential knowledge that you would require if you want to become a diplomat, a risk management expert, a journalist, um, a political reporter, or a sci political scientist, or anything like that. Uh, the skills are very high in demand, um, and a lot of the companies nowadays are looking for people who can navigate geopolitical risks in such a way that they can make the jobs of multinational corporations much easier, because the world that we live in is extremely unpredictable. So these are just skills that are extremely good to have. Amira, would you want to add something about why you should study IR and EP? I truly agree. I cannot stress like enough, as Avin have said, that how important it is right now to have a, ba a bachelor's in international relations or a master's in international relations, especially because an internationalist is somebody that knows about politics, about social issues, and about economics. It's the whole package, and that's why businesses and everybody is trying to grab their hands into an internationalist. So really, really consider this program because it's so important right now. And yeah, I think that would be it. Yeah, perfect. Um, I think you can now speak uh, more about the bachelor's program that we have here at Muni. Yes, so um, the bachelor's program, um, we decided to divide it in like five um, parts. So you can see a little bit of all what it consists the first um we believe that you should choose the bachelor's program because um it helps you mold your path uh, we have a like a smaller core of compulsory courses but all of them are the basis for international relations and european politics and they are very easy to understand they really give you uh intro to what it is international relations and what it is um European politics, I feel like without these courses, I wouldn't have been able to understand the very, very core of how Europe and how the international stage works. And we also have tons, tons of intern, like optional courses. And as the semesters go by, they keep changing. We will show you a little bit like furthermore about how they look like and everything. And the university always has a very broad selection. And with this like also the university has a lot of partnerships with um other types of programs where you can take also courses in from other universities by with the adult program or also by alliances with universities like in the us in hungary in france so it's very interesting and we also have a very large community um currently there's um around 160 students from 48 countries. I think the number is a little bit more now, and Mihail already mentioned it in the beginning. The number keeps just getting bigger and bigger as the semesters go by. So, like, you could be taking classes from people from Canada, Georgia, then France, then Italy. Like, like every uh, class that you will have will be always filled with people from all over the world. So, you really get the international perspective because you see people from those parts and they can give you a more accurate presentation of what's going on in those parts and about their telling and also the department hosts other english programs so you just don't have to limit yourself to international relations and european studies although it's the best we cannot deny that right Avina? and <laughs> I, I especially cannot deny that yeah <laughs> I, even I studied the bachelor's program. Um, I just graduated last year. Um, it has been a tremendous journey for me. As you can see, I'm now in the master's program. Um, so yeah, just the aspect of flexibility and the amount of courses that you have is just a very interesting aspect to have because you can do anything from economics to conflict analysis to even something related to sociology in international relations or 
um, conflict psychology. So there's everything for everyone, um, and you just have to make the best of it. I'll speak more about the master's courses now. They are intended to build knowledge from what you have gained during your bachelor's. Uh, they build core competencies and then focus more on actual practical skills. I recently took a course which had um, us design a developmental project um, as a project management course that we did. And now we are still waiting for the results of it, but we had to do a pitch. We had to get data. We had to get the monetary aspect of everything quite done. Uh, so the courses are very intensive and require a lot of expertise. Um, and you will gain a lot of skills uh, while doing so. You will have things from policy drafting, data analysis, um, everything that you will need in your future career um, will be provided to you with this master's program. It's very intensive. It's a very good course. That's why you know I'm, I'm doing the master's right now for the bachelor's. And I have to emphasize this as well, that the professors here are literally guardian angels of yours because they are very nice, uh, very cooperative. Um, they always respond on time. And if something goes wrong, they will try their best to help you. A lot of things went wrong with me during the bachelor's and uh, the program guarantors, as well as the study advisors, they they stood by me and you know they always supported me, gave me good advice on what to do and what not to do. So yeah, th it's a very close-knit community. A lot of people from all around the world, as Amir already mentioned, and the professors are just simply top class. Uh, they know what they're doing. So I'll talk more about why you should choose our department specifically. First of all, um, the program, I would say, is very cost effective when we compare to rest of the European countries. And the ranking of Muni also you know, aligns with it. So you know, it's a good course. It's a good university. You can start specializing in different careers um, right from the get-go. You have the flexibility to choose elective courses as you want them to be. The compulsory is you have to be sure that you do them. But with the elective course, as I mentioned, you know, if you like economics, you can take those courses. If you have something to do with more math related, um, even you can choose that. And of course, you can even choose courses from other uh, programs that are offered here at the Faculty of Social Studies, like um, from politics, media, and communication, or global challenges, if you know you find something that's actually viable for your interests. And the best part about studying here is how less students there are um, in like each classes. So some classes, the compulsory courses, will of course have like large amount of students there, 40 students or even 60 students. But with the elective courses, because the focus is so specific on certain things, and many people have different focuses. So you will get a class with 10 people or 15 people and the professors can have individual focus on you and help you grow better in your careers. So I think that's a very important aspect on what needs to be done. And now, of course, Amira can discuss more about the optional courses that we have um, and maybe even a favorite course that she took. Yes. So as I was saying before, we have a really, really broad um, variety of optional courses. These are literally just a few of them, like and just so like so you can get an idea. And as you can see, they talk about something so specific as the European Union to other regions all over the world. And there's even more like for real, don't um, be fooled by just these few because there's so many, many, many. And also we have the I think the advantage is that we can take courses outside from our field of study. Of course, not a lot when it comes to the bachelor's program. I think with the master's, there's more flexibility. But at least with the bachelor's, we can take other courses and we can focus a little bit more on certain regions if we're interested to. But again, like the core, like the courses are very diverse. My favorite ones, um, personally, have been peace economics, which is about sanctions and how, like, the economic aspect of building peace. I think it's a really interesting course. And if you come to Masaryk University, especially if you apply to our program, I really, really suggest that you take it. It's amazing, and I think it's one of the best courses I have taken. But I have also taken other courses relating more which one I'm interested to, which is the under studies. And it's just insane, like uh, the variety that we have when it comes to the programs. Um, I've been 
I don't know if you have a favorite program as well when you were studying your bachelor's. Oh, for sure. Um, Peace Economics, like Amira said, is the best course. Uh, you'll have so much fun while studying it. Uh, Martin, who is the program guarantor as well as study advisor for the bachelor's program, is extensive with the course and the way he explains things are just uh, amazingly done. Um, you gain so many practical skills and how to apply uh, different theories to actual real life applications and get stuff done. Um, you'll you learn a lot with peace economics. Um, on another notice, like there was another course offered by another prof a visiting lecturer called foreign policy analysis. And that was actually a very good course as well. Uh, we basically learned how to analyze like foreign policy from different perspectives, from leadership perspective to stuff that's coming around from outside the world and how it influences different foreign policies in certain regards. So these were my favorite uh, courses during my bachelor's. Right now I'm studying my master's. So of course I have a class called the theory of cooperation and conflict. And it, it really is a very, very good course, teaches you a lot very practical, I would say. And of course, I can't forget the executive skills in international relations, which is the project management course and teaches you core competencies into how to build and pitch an actual project to investors in the future. So yeah, I think we're done with the program option courses. We can go ahead with internships and there are many of them when you study international relations and European politics. The, the doors to your careers will just open phenomenally. And you can intern from, you can do an Erasmus internship to the Institute of International Relations at Prague to Radio Free Europe and Globsec like Amira did. So Amira, you want to tell something more about your Globsec internship? Yes, like I did two internships since my time in Berno, so I have been very uh, glad to have the opportunity. I think Globso has been uh, one most related to my field of studies, and it was just an insane opportunity. I got to meet from high end to middle end politicians, and I got to really see that I, what I was learning, like it actually made sense, and like I don't know. It was just an insane opportunity and I got to hear panels about procurement. I got to hear panels about the Ukraine uh, situation. I got to hear panels about sanctions. How do they work? How effective they are about um, adhesion in the European Union? So it was such an amazing opportunity. And I also got to meet a lot of people from all over the world. And it was just insane. And I truly recommend that if you're applying to this program, you try to look for an internship in these places and Globsec, very recommended. <laughs> but overall, um, the program really gives you the facility to apply to like these opportunities. And because we are from Masaryk University, which is considered one of the most prestigious universities here in Central Europe, like it's very easy to access to these opportunities. For sure, Amira, you could not have said it better. Um, now on to the more important aspects of uh, what things are. If you want to study international relations and European politics with us, you'll have to get familiar with these dates. I think Amira can go and explain the bachelor's dates and I can discuss the master's, although there's only the difference between the dates and the application procedure usually stays the same. So Amira, you can go ahead. So yeah. So for the fall enrollment, technically, like the like deadline for the application is June 1st, and then fall is enrolled on the 1st of September. This is only done by people that are really are already like accepted and they have already started. So it's like only necessary for people in their second semester. And the other deadline for the spring semester is in November 15. And the admission process is technically practically the same if not the same for both. Uh, it is, it is the same. Yeah. The same. It is the same. I know. It is the same. It is uh, the same. Yes, yes, yes. And um, there's a proof of English yeah. and in the website, you can see like all the types of um, English proofs that you can give. It can be CHI, I think IELTS and many more. Um, 
ID, passport, the transcript of records. You don't need to have your diploma. I want to emphasize that you don't need to have your diploma or you have graduated already to apply. You just need the transcript of records. You just need um, to prove um, that you're currently still studying and that you have already passed like to the certain level, which in this case, it would be your final year. And that's pretty much it. So it's only the transcript of records that you need. You don't need a diploma. Or if you have the diploma, you already graduated, that's OK. Uh, for the cover letter, it's technically a motivation letter. Why do you want to study this program? Um, for that, I truly recommend you to just pour your soul into why are you even motivated to study international relations and European politics? What attracts you the most? Why this program? not the others like just be truth about why you want to study that how do you visualize yourself in the future and i think you will be um, set to go and the essay again for your soul in what you feel um that you i don't know whatever like <laughs> feel you yeah, that you want to focus in international relations for me it was about uh gender again study so my essay was about that and I mean, I'm here, so I think it went really well. And the online yeah, interview again, here. be true. <laughs> See, yeah. yes. And then for the online interview again, be true about why you're here, and the professors um, they won't bite you. So like, just be true. And now you can start with the masters. Yeah, um, I'll start with the masters. The applications open from the the first to the 30th of April for the fall enrollment and from July 15th to November 15th for the spring enrollment. The admission process procedure, like Amira said, is the same uh, for both the bachelor's and master's. Uh, IDs, proofs of everything, uh, cover letter, and the essay. I'll just say, uh, write your essay, whatever you're interested in, um, you know, you'll do good. It's an academic essay, so make sure that you have everything cited um, and make sure that you're not using AI or plagiarizing anything. Um, just be honest with what you think your abilities are. And I think you're going to have a very easy time getting into the program if you're good enough. Um, and the online interview as well, you know, nothing to be scared about. It's just the professors. They want to get to know you because most of the classes are very small. They have an individual aspect to them. So, you know, if you get to know your professors already beforehand, before you even enter the university, I think it's just a better experience for you. I would also recommend that the requirements sometimes, um, as the faculty evolves, most international students that we get, the we try to up the ante of the requirements. So just keep up with them on the faculty page. Um, it should not be that difficult. All the information that you would ever need um, from requirements of visa to what you need, all the documents will be there in the Muni admissions page. Um, yeah, and it's a very comprehensive, comprehensive uh, website. So you'll have, you'll find everything there. Now, coming to our alumni, as we already demonstrated from Amira, having a very good internship experience, you're not gonna be interning for the rest of your life. You're gonna have careers after this. So we have a few examples of few, not many, because we cannot put all of them inside the presentation of the bachelor's program alumni doing extremely good things. Um, if you want maybe um, to see what career paths you can get into, they can serve as very good examples for you. Um, they were smart people who graduated from this program and now are doing extremely good things with the rest of their life. And Amira, if you want to say something as well, give an introduction to something or add something to the alumni. Like personally, I couldn't met uh, Alexandra, but I did met Karina and she's just amazing. The way that her mind work was insane and her thesis was the same when she graduated. She put so much love into into just international relations and European politics. And I think she was always really grateful at Masari because she said that without this program she couldn't have done it she couldn't have understand it so she always has uh, a special heart a special place in her heart for mosaic so i think that's pretty for, much for sure for sure like these are all the alumni that we have you know they're doing extremely good things um you can also look them up on the faculty fss lounge sometimes we'll have episodes with alumni so yeah there you go um, I, I hope this presentation helped you make a better decision and I hope you choose IREP because 
be the best. Okay, anyway, um, on to the next presentation. Uh, if you have any questions right now, you can fire away and we'll try to answer them the best way we can. Yes, thank you guys very much. Uh, we have some questions for you. Uh, so, um, There's no word limit uh, for the cover letter, but it should be around like 500 words. It should not be that long because at the end it's a cover letter. So like, don't do like a thousand words now that's like, but around 500 yeah. words is recommendable. I would say stick to one page. One page is enough information um, or you can ma go maximum like one and a half page um, if you really have to discuss a lot of things. But one page is standard limit. Um, just stick to that and you should be good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And there is another question. When is the interview meeting for master, full semester? Well, you know, we cannot give you a specific date for any interviews. You give in your application, then you should have a professor or a faculty member reaching out to you, giving you details about when the end interview is going to be scheduled. And you can go about telling them if that date is comfortable for you or would you like to have something else done so you know it depends from every person there's no fixed thing to be done and this just to add a little bit and it's the same for the bachelors so great and there was another question from Bahare. please explain more about supervisors advice in process of writing thesis and proposals for sure. Um, I think Amira, since she's writing a thesis right now, is a better person because she has the experience. Although I wrote a thesis as well, so I can add later. But Amira, there you go. Your chance. Um, I think it all depends on your supervisor. For the moment, my supervisor is really helpful. She gives me a lot of advice on what should like uh, the thesis include right now, at least for the literature review, which is like the vital part, because that's going to let the people know that you know about the subject and that you have recover all the information about it. So my supervisor has been really helpful in giving me material and everything, but I know um, that's not the case with every supervisor. So I think it all depends on the topic um, that you want to write about and also on the supervisor that you ask um, for. And, but I think, I, mean, I don't I think, I don't know if you had a different experience or a similar one, but I, I had an absolutely similar experience. I wrote my thesis on a economic topic about how currencies work in the international context. Um, and my supervisor was great. Uh, he kept giving me content on what to add, what not to add. Sometimes it would be an email at midnight with a crazy idea of like, hey, Abhinav, you should proceed with this and you should do this like this. And, you know, it was a great time doing my thesis. Um, Professors are very helpful, especially your supervisors. They're there for you and they're going to stand up for you if you're doing a good job. But, you know, if you are not doing a good job, then they'll also tell you where to improve and what you are doing wrong. So you can improve your abilities better. So, yeah, thesis experience, honestly, a piece of cake for me. Uh, let's hope for Amira, it's also a piece of cake. Yeah. And if yeah, you have any so other questions, <laughs> far away. Okay, guys, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, uh, IREP no is one of our greatest uh, programs. So we have bachelor and master student ambassadors here. So if you have any questions, so, so do not hesitate to ask. So thank you very much, guys. And let's proceed to, to another presentation.